Welcome back guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to a brand new day for Road to TCG Worlds 2017, 2018 I mean, <laughs> jet lag, jet lag, um, <laughs> disclaimer, I'm very jet lag, so any silly things I do or say, please uh, do not take them seriously, um, and if you're watching live on Twitch, thanks so much for being here, there's over 70 of you, which is really, really nice, thank you so much for being here guys, and Today, or right now, it's time for Glacian. So, Glacian GX 200 HP, Freezing Gaze, as long as it's active, our opponent's Pokemon GX and Pokemon EX do not have abilities, cannot use abilities, which is really, really nice. Um, Frost Bullet, 90 damage, and then 30 damage to a bench Pokemon. And Polar Spear, 50 damage for every damage counter on our opponent's active Pokemon. So, the 30 damage placement from Frost Bullet will actually be very, very impactful. Now, we do have the Sun and Moon Eevee, which is really nice, and we get to use Energy Evolution, so we actually get the Turn 1 Glacian, which, when going first, can actually stop a lot of our opponent's decks in their tracks, and I feel like many people will start adapting and including even more supporter cards than we have seen previously. Um, then we have a 3-3 supporting line of Zoark. It can attack, but it's mainly there in order to um, to get us the other disrupting cards and useful cards such as red cards, such as Hammer, such as N, such as Cynthia, or Choice Bands, etc. Now we have two Lele as well for extra support. And then we have four supporter cards, four N, two Cynthia, one Sycamore, two Bridget, one Ace Roll, and two Guzma. Perhaps Mallow could be very decent. We did see Mal a two Mallow list just when Oceana. However, stage two decks obviously require more um, support. And we are running four Ultra Ball, four puzzles, of course, as any as any good Zorak deck should. And then we have four Red Card. Red Card, essentially, with Glacian, um, it gives us an N effect of sorts. But we also get to use something like Kuzma or Sycamore or Cynthia or even Acerola. So red card seems like a very, very um, good play here, especially with the ability lock. Then we have two Enhanced Hammers, two Field Blowers, two Choice Bands, two Float Stones and a single Rescue Stretcher. Um, no Aqua Patch this time. Um, the matches should be slow enough where you get to power up um, Glacian quickly enough. Maybe one, maybe two Aqua Patches could be decent just to have that recovery. Um, but for now, we're not including it. Um, eight basic water energy and four double colorless energy to round out the deck and give us a healthy amount of energy in order to be able to get that fabled turn one Glacian. So, let's search for an opponent. Um, Glacian, the CDI, I don't think that's good enough um, because you don't have any good draw support and I think Zorak decks, in order, like one Zorak is not that great. When you start getting like three or four Zorak, like two or three Zoraks into play and start seeing so many extra cards, that's where it really shines. Um, we know Twitch, thank you so much for being here. I understand it's the first time and yeah, Friday and Saturday are viewer battles. Um, Leo, I hope you paid attention <laughs> to the Glacian Zorak deck list. Ace, hello, thank you so much for being here. Very nice Glacian emoji, where is it from? And yeah, Max Rock, red card in this deck is definitely very, very good. So we get to go first, so can we get the fabled Eevee Water Energy start? We don't get the Water Energy, we do have the Eevee. Um, with no Water Energy, I feel like it's so good to get it that I'm gonna forego setting up with Bridget unless I top deck the Water Energy. And we're up against a Mega Beedrill Paralysis deck. Okay. Okay, so Guzma is gonna be really huge. Um, Floatstone, probably not so much. So that will be the Sacrificial Lamb. And then we're gonna go for Lele. Lele into Bridget. And then we're gonna go for the turn one. Um, Frosting, whatever it's called. Uh, which I forgot, but I'll remember right now. <laughs> I'm really jet lag, guys. Um, yeah, one EV, two Zoruas, and then it's freezing gaze, not frosting. I don't know why I said frosting. Maybe I want ice cream, and that's why I said frosting. Okay, so let's evolve. 
And we generally could not have asked for a better start. I mean, I guess we could have. We could have just already had the DC in our hand to start attacking, but this is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty darn good. And hello, Lonely Mr. Beach. Thank you so much for being here. I'm doing pretty well, but pretty jet lagged. Um, so that should explain any any silly stuff I say on the stream. And ooh, we see a parallel city immediately, uh, which just means we get rid of the Layla. It's fine. It's really, really fine. And now we see a Cynthia. We see a Cynthia for six brand new cards. Who knows what my opponent is trying to do here. And ooh, Venusaur Mega Beedrill. That actually sounds like a fun deck. But my opponent uses Double Scrapper. Um, okay, so playing Seacomer here doesn't feel very good. Playing Seacomer doesn't feel very good because I want to keep Puzzles and I want to keep Kuzmas to get out of the Paralysis. So I'm just going to Cynthia here. And my opponent has exactly four cards. How much HP does Mega Beedrill have? Um, at least 200, right? There's no way it has 180. So Choice Band is pretty smart here. And then I'm going to trade away the Eevee. Uh, Van Walker, <laughs> hello, welcome Ultra Prism indeed. Um, my opponent is reducing his own damage, which seems silly, but that's okay. And the 30 to any Bulbasaur doesn't really matter. We'll have to see what happens here. Um, I did go to Internationals, aka Torch Playground indeed. Um, I'm very happy to say that between NAIC, Worlds, um, the European International, and there's a victory, the European International, and then the Ocean International, I'm one of the very few people who have beat Tord, who have beaten Tord. Um, I beat Tord at Worlds. So that counts for something, right? Um, which do you think is the best deck from Ultra Prism? Like, best deck after Ultra Prism? I don't know, like overall. Best deck to come out of the set? Probably some sort of Glacian Denial deck or probably some sort of um, Dust Main Magnus on deck. One of those two. Um, I played Buzzle Lycan Rock at the International. And I went five and four. I lost my last round. If I had won my last round, I would have been six and three. And based on what I saw from my resistance, I think I actually would have made it as, as a 30-second seed two years in a row, which would have been incredibly weird. Um, but yeah, it didn't happen. I lost in like 10 minutes the last round in a mirror match where I went first both times and both times my opponent got double elixir attached on his puzzle to knock out my puzzle and he left me with nothing on the field so I just got um, completely wrecked okay so based on my opponent's deck box I would assume we're up against Zoar Gardevoir um, not going first and not starting Glacian is not ideal but there's not much we can do about that um, I didn't even need to lay for Bridget though, which is fine. Um, <laughs> it's no problem, lonely Mr. Beach. It wasn't, it wasn't an issue. <laughs> I was also trying to eat fast, so it's fine. Um, yeah, it happens. Okay, my opponent decides to attach, which is not the best. I the best call here, I think. Um, because I can just remove the energy, which is really cool. Um, we won't be stopping abilities right now. But we will be getting the Glacian into play. So we're looking for DC Floatstone or DC Guzma next turn. Which doesn't seem very likely. But I'd settle for a Water Energy to just deny my opponent's or GX's abilities. Um, <laughs> what do you mean less buff? Um, okay, so there's the first Tivo Soda or the first Zorg. And I was trying to think, what would you play 
in Zorark. Guardi from Ultra Prism, that's good. And other than one Cynthia, I don't think the deck changes much at all. Um, but when it did go for Lele, uh, probably going for Cynthia or Sycamore, I doubt he's going to end. I would appreciate the end, but I'm not counting on it. There's a Sycamore. There is the Sycamore. And yep, discarding Amalo. Okay, understandable. Um, what about Palpat? Palpat is probably... I mean, you have puzzles. So I don't think Palpat is, is a good inclusion. <laughs> In your mind, I was buff. I'm working on it. Okay, so my opponent did find Floodstone. The thing is, if he has DCE and he knocks out my Zerua, then that means I get to promote um, Glacian, so I now only need the DCE. So, him taking in the knockout would actually not be terrible for us. Um, maybe I should have set up two, Zor like, two Zeruas on one Eevee instead of two Eevees on one Zerua though. Um, expanded Rotoms. Oh yeah, Rotom sounds like a fun deck actually. I'll definitely be trying some sort of Rotom deck with a lot, a lot of tool cards. Why expanded though? I think it could work in standard as well. Like Zorark Rotoms, and then you get all the Rotom types and you get a lot of versatility. And you could easily play like for Choice Band, for Floatstone, for Assault Vest. Um, for Bursting Balloon, getting 9 in the discard doesn't seem difficult with Sora trading and then Ultra Bolts and Sycamores. Eva Soda. Okay, Triple Sora is very nice <laughs> for my opponent. He's already used up two puzzles though, which is good for us. Do you take the knockout though? That's the question. I guess you do. I guess you do. So now we're looking for Choice Band DC. We don't necessarily need the Choice Band this turn. Um, because 90 and then 120 is perfect match on the Zorg. Um, oh yeah, okay. So Compressor is a pretty good card. But then in Standard there's no Hex. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna just... Well, do I remove the stadium? If, yeah, I think so, because if I hit for 70, that's really bad. Hitting for just 70 is really, really bad. Hitting for 0 is the worst case scenario, though. But we're not gonna hit for 0, that's cool. Definitely should have had another... Um, definitely should have had another... I can't speak today, guys. I really can't. Um, I think the Floatstone. Definitely should have had another Zorua there. That way I would have told Zorark already. And pretty cool. We get the red card, which is one of the cards we're looking for. Now we're looking for... Um, we're looking for a choice one so that we don't have to use the GX attack. And I'm going to put the three counters on Ralts. That way my opponent doesn't have rare candy cardy. We actually could get three prizes next turn, which is really nice. Um, okay, we're doing pretty well here, I think. We're doing pretty, pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I tried Zorg and Guardi, and I tried a 1-1. One, one. That was my mistake. Um, <laughs> Zorg Guardi is pretty good indeed. I, de I probably said Zorg Guardi was never going to be good enough. I definitely probably said something silly like that. And okay. So, ooh. If we had... If we had the floatstone that I got rid of the previous turn, <laughs> we could have had... We could have double knocked out the Ralts, which would have been really cool. Um, we do get to evolve into another Eevee. And then we have two Choice Bands and one floatstone. No Mallow, though. 
no mallow so what I am going to do I don't want to play N right so that's a card I get rid of and then off of the double trades I'm looking for any any tool card either choice band to get a knockout now or floatstone to knock out the two routes and there's one okay do I really want to knock out both routes I think I do I didn't get the choice band anyway so it technically doesn't matter but that's fine I mean, the, the Flowstone was the least likely, but this works. We have a pretty good hand here. And the we're threatened we're threatened by the two by Cardi, not by Zorark. Like even if my opponent gets a knockout here, that's fine. Because we have the replacement Glacian. Um we have a chance. Oh, I had two ones prized. We have a chance at getting the choice band after this turn. Um, worst comes to worst, we can maybe double puzzle for hammer, or just get the hammer as well. So yeah, we should be good here. We really should be good. The Pokemon Evolutionaries, thank you so much for the host, that's very kind of you. And wow, yeah, my opponent doesn't even have bench Pokemon now. My opponent doesn't even have bench Pokemon. And Purple Cliff, thank you so much for the host. Welcome to all the new viewers. I think I'll just end here. We know my opponent is drawing dead, kind of, uh, but I really just want the choice band here. I really, really just want a choice band. So we're gonna trade. Yeah, ability lock is just really, really good. And there's the choice band. Wow, I'm just hitting everything. I'm really just hitting everything. Okay. So there's a choice band, we're gonna retreat, we get perfect maths here, this is just amazing. And then, after we frost bullet, we get a knockout here, we're down to two prize cards, and we still have our GX attack. Which, with a Guzma, if I'm not mistaken, we would deal 150, 180 with a choice band, so perfect numbers once again. This, this Glacian is just really, really nice, guys really really ridiculously nice there's the ultra ball he can't ultra ball for Lele though ultra ball for Ralts that's fine I think that's all my opponent is going to do here hammer that's okay and then he hits us for 60 that's also perfectly fine so we can potentially win this turn we do need Okay, I definitely don't want to red card my opponent this time around. Um, I insist that I really don't want to red card my opponent anymore. Um, why no Aqua Patch? Okay, there we go. That There's a win. Um, no Aqua Patch because... I mean, the whole point of this deck is to slow things down. And what deck can just consistently knockout glacian like you should have enough time i think um you should have enough time to just um, take it slow and attach one energy per turn because with the ability lock um you're slowing down a lot of things um but yeah maybe one or two aqua patch could be good just to have that extra acceleration maybe that's good enough uh but yeah we get a pretty straightforward win against the recent international champion Pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, hello, Evil. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so so much for being here. Okay, guys. So last last match of the stream, unless it's a very unless it's a very quick win. This will be the last match of the stream. Oh, after seeing this and like Glacian working out nicely. Um. I don't know, I'm worried about the two League Cups this weekend that I have because I definitely won't have any um, Ultra Prism cards, so maybe I'll be at a disadvantage. I mean, I'll have some, but not a lot. I will have some, just not a lot. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> definitely don't want to start Zorua. Going second though, so no turn one collation for us. We get another pretty exciting hand, like a pretty really good hand. Pretty really good, yeah. I, Jet lag is <laughs> jet lag is difficult, guys. 
Oh wow, my opponent with the with the turn one Bridget before the game even started. Ooh, but nothing else. That's actually really nice for us. Unless he has like double Zord, um, Sycamore in his hand. Okay, and then we bridge it here. Bridget for double Zerua and an EV. Yeah, full bench. I mean, the grass energy means it's either Zoro Pod or Zoro Leafian, which both are fine. There's one Zork. There's another grass. Ugh. That, my opponent getting the first hit in is actually going to be really annoying. Actually, gonna be really, really annoying. Ryan, thank you so much for the host. That's very kind of you. Team TCGO representing here, guys, today. 83 viewers. That's crazy. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank you so, so much for your support and for everything. Okay, 80 damage, though. Only 80 damage. So. Don't want a red card to give my opponent extra extra cards. Um, I will trade, however, the Lele or the Eevee or the red card. The red card seems good. And field blower is not too good, so I'm just gonna frost bullet into the Coco. That way, Coco doesn't survive the frost bullet for more than one turn. Um, Evil, the new Delphox, I mean, that's not even coming out next set, right? So, no, I definitely haven't seen that. Ooh, my opponent goes for the Acerola. That seems bad, actually. That seems really bad. I mean, if we don't find the DC, then it's fine, but... We really need DC. It's not DC, guys. And that is not DC, I insist. Okay. So, I will evolve into Glacian, and I think I'm gonna go for a Kuzma here. Just so that my opponent doesn't get a free retreat into attacking me again. Um, I guess I'll promote the Zorak. And then I'll attach the Floatstone and retreat that way. The question is, do I retreat into the new Glacian or the old Glacian? Mm, I think I'd rather the old Glacian for now. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen the new cards. Like, Ultra Prism just came out, and there are so many tournaments where Ultra Prism is legal that I really haven't seen all the new cards. Um, I try not to look at them, honestly, too much, just because... Um, just because they don't help me in doing better at the... They don't help me at doing better um, at the tournaments that I have to go to, so I, I haven't seen the new Delphox. I only saw, I saw the Frogadier because it appeared on my stream, which has like the Gold Bite ability. Okay, there's a Guzma though. There's a Kuzma. So my opponent gets one trade off for two cards. No supporter use either. Ooh, DT and Evo Soda. Wow, those are very two good. Those are two very good cards. Those are two very, very good cards. Okay. So first things first, we trade away the Eevee, I think. Ugh. Um, my opponent did hit me. I definitely want to Kuzma again. Yeah, I'm going to Kuzma here. And I'm going to just... Uh, okay, so now I'm going to bring up the new Glacian. 
and I'm gonna pass. What does my opponent top deck? We shall see. Puzzle, okay. Okay, so finally we should be good here. We should be good. Okay, the question is, do I want a sycamore here? I think I do. Losing the puzzle is not that bad. Um, and this hammer is pretty good. I could shuffle, but that gives him four extra cards, which doesn't seem ideal. Um, so I'll just get rid of the red card. Delphox has an ability that can burn the active Pokemon every turn with Infernape, can do 60. Um, okay, that sounds viable. Um, what would you attack with, though? Like, you're, you're, you need stage 2s. Um, Ho GX, as you mentioned, doesn't get back um, the stage 2s, only uh, GX and EX stage 2s, so... Seems iffy. Okay, so I'm gonna Frost Bullet the Energy Zork. That's the most likely to come up to attack, I believe. We get a price card for our efforts. And it doesn't matter that we're at uneven prices because the Coco will always be there, potentially. Top deck DC just for 60 damage though, which is fine. I mean, my opponent would need a full bench and a choice band to knock us up next turn. So I'm generally not too worried at this point. Um, I'm gonna trade. The Ultra Ball. And there's a victory. Yep. So, Glacian GX's ability just too strong. Too strong against Zoark decks. And if I'm gonna see Zoark this weekend, oof. That would be. I mean, if I'm gonna see Glacian this weekend, then I do feel like I'll be at a disadvantage somewhat. Um, but, anyways, guys, this will be all from me today now. Um, um, the short stream I know but it's getting pretty late here and I'm super super tired so I think I just wanna I just wanna head out and sleep um, thank you so much for the subscribers thank you so much for the follows thank you so much for the bits the white snake and I will see you guys tomorrow um, try to see you host me just as I'm leaving but thank you so much um, nice seeing you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you guys tomorrow in Spanish, probably with the same two decks. Um, I really had fun playing the Garchomp deck though. Um, I can't believe we won that second game. And Glacian is actually strong. Um, like it worked out pretty nicely there. So yeah, this will be all for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you're watching on YouTube. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.